I will call Gareth Johnson to move the motion and I will then call the Minister to respond. There will not be an opportunity for the member in charge to wind up, as is the Convention for 30-minute debates. Order, order. Gareth Johnson to move the motion. Um, thank you, Mr Mundell. I beg to move that government, for government support for repairs to the A226 Galley Hill Road. Uh, Mr Mundell, uh, this debate relates to the road named Galley Hill. Uh, in my constituency in Dartford, which is part of the A226 route, often referred to as London Road. This runs from Dartford through Gravesend, where my honourable friend is the MP for, and would also like to contribute to this debate. Through Gravesend um, to the A2 in Rochester. And it's a vital thoroughfare that is relied upon by local residents and businesses, and also haulage serving the local community and beyond. Mr Mundell, on the 10th of April last year, a stretch of the road which sits on a chalk spine collapsed, taking the road, the footpath and the utilities down onto business premises and rendering the road completely unpassable. Mr Mundell, to understand what may have caused this collapse, it is necessary to look at the recent history of the road. In the September prior to the collapse, I met with Kent County Council and with Thames Water to discuss the road. A significant number of water leaks were taking place in London Road at that time and it was causing absolute mayhem for people living in the local area. At that meeting, I discovered there were no less than 47 serious water leaks in the previous four years which is possibly the highest number of leaks on any stretch of road in the whole of the county of Kent. Now, we don't know for certain if the water leaks caused the collapse of the road or if the road itself was responsible for damaging the water pipes. That is an area of contention between Thames Water and KCC, an issue that must be resolved in order to establish liability. I had hoped they would resolve the issue of liability quickly but alas, that has not been the case. What we do know is that the road being closed now for over a year has caused enormous misery for people just trying to go about their daily business. HGVs have been using the narrow Swanscombe High Street, which although KCC has put in a temporary traffic order to stop, this hasn't entirely solved those problems. We have a significant number of businesses in the area on either side of Galley Hill have seen their takings reduced due to the lengthy diversion that has to be covered in order to circumvent the road that has collapsed. I met with the previous roads minister to ask for his assistance and to show him the road and he agreed and he came down to Galley Hill to have a look at that road for himself to see exactly what the problem was. It was hoped at that stage that liability could be established and that a contractor could get on with repairing or replacing the road. The current minister, uh, in his place, has met with me on numerous times, and with Kent County Council as well, and I pay tribute to him for the keen interest he has shown in this issue and trying to find a solution. It's typical of the minister's attitude to these kinds of issues, and I'm grateful to him for that. What we cannot have is for nothing to happen, though, whilst Kent County Council and Thames Water resolve their dispute. It is highly likely one of them will have to pick up the bill, but deciding on that should not hold the residents of Swanscombe, Greenhide and Northfleet to ransom whilst that's being decided upon. What adds to the complication in all this, Mr Mundell, is that in order to survey the road to establish the cause of the collapse, Kent County Council have to enter private land. The road is adjacent to land that three owners possess. Um, sorry, that three owners possess, three separate uh, plots of land, each with their own individual owner. The road is adjacent to that, and, and two of them <coughs> have agreed to allow Kent County Council access, but one is refusing, thus making surveys almost impossible to carry out. I'm pleased that Kent County Council have now agreed that they will take legal action to access the road, but I plead to them to hasten their approach to this. In short, Kent County Council needs to find out what caused this collapse as quickly as possible.
The local Kent County Councillor, Peter Harmon, from a residence group, has been trying extremely hard to persuade the landowner to allow access, but so far, unfortunately, to no avail. This is why I've secured this debate today to ask formally the government to step, up, step in to pay for the repair or replacement of the road whilst Kent County Council and Thames Water are arguing out liability. Whichever is liable can compensate the government at a later date, but crucially, local residents can see the prospect of an end to the misery that they are currently suffering. I accept that the government needs to know what that liability is, and so those surveys need to be carried out as soon as possible. The government also needs both Kent County Council and Thames Water to agree to this course of action. And my understanding at the present time, and I'll be corrected by the Minister during his speech if I've got this wrong, but my understanding is that only Kent County Council have given their consent and Thames Water have not responded to the government. I asked Thames Water just last week for a meeting prior to this debate so we could discuss the issues around liability and discuss the way forward over this. I have had no response from Thames Water either. And this is just not fair, Mr Mundell, Mundell, on the local people. And those local people, don't forget, are their customers, Mr Mundell. It is a very frustrating situation, therefore. And it's a frustrating situation that has gone on for far too long. Kent County Council needs to carry out these surveys by legal action or otherwise. Thames Water needs to actually engage with people, and Thames Water cannot be surprised when some people are pointing the finger at them, given the history of leaks in that local area. So I ask the Minister to do what he can to find a solution, and most importantly of all, for this road to be either repaired or replaced, so that local people can at last get their lives back. Thank you. The question is that this House has considered government support for repairs to the A226 Galley Hill Road. Adam Holloway. Thank you, Mr Mundell, and thank you particularly to my honourable friend, the Member for Dartford, for getting this debate, because this thing has been something of a nightmare for quite a few of my constituents, and it's ongoing, as we've heard. And I really apologise about my voice. I'm going to cut my speech slightly shorter. Well, I've received multiple complaints about the situation. This, this, this road is a very, very important part of our road network, and its closure is putting massive strain onto the A2 whenever there's a problem, or indeed the Dartford, where there's a problem at the Dartford crossing. And the absence of Galley Hill makes it impossible for local people to travel easily to and from Dartford. Bus users are particularly affected and people travelling by bus from my constituency to the local acute hospital now have their bus routes split in two separate routes to cope with the congestion. It also sometimes takes constituents up to half an hour to get out of Ebbsfleet International Railway Station car park, which more than doubles their journey time to London. The diversion for pedestrians and cyclists is also huge. So getting the road open again is an absolute priority. And I'm really grateful to the Minister and his predecessor for being so proactive over this. I know his department devolves transport masses to the, um, to the local authorities. I believe that now it's vital that we, they step, the government steps in um, as the when the local authority cannot reopen a road in a reasonable time frame, as is the case here. So, as my honourable friend has already suggested, in a situation like this, where there's a lack of clarity about the liability and that creates an impasse, the government can and should act to get the road open again. The government underwriting the works without waiting for legal disputes to be resolved will make a huge difference to businesses and residents in Dartford and Gravesham who rely upon this road. I think this will be an excellent use of taxpayers' money and, of course, the taxpayer would eventually get the money back from the water company or Kent County Council. I was going to speak about leaks, but to save you from having to listen to my awful voice, and because my honourable friend has already mentioned it, I, I shan't. And I'll just conclude by, uh, by saying that uh, I've got to add one other um, frustrating thing. 
some of the problems we've identified with traffic will remain, even when Galley Hill Road has been reopened, because the minister and his predecessors, or rather his predecessors, ignored my solution for the Dartford crossing, which was to have a long tunnel at Dartford for M25 long-term traffic and to use the infrastructure, the bridge and the tunnels that are already there for local traffic. So his department's proposal for the Lower Thames crossing will not solve the problem of the traffic at Dartford. My constituents, but actually more so those living in Dartford, will continue to be plagued by traffic problems because of this, I believe, mistake. Finally, I'm going to ask my honourable friend to pass on my thanks and my constituents' thanks to Councillor Harmon for his efforts. Um, and can I also thank the Minister, who really has taken this, in the scheme of things, for his huge portfolio, relatively small thing, so seriously and so kindly yeah, yeah. engaging with us. Thank you. Minister to respond. Well, uh, thank you, Mr Mundell. It's a pleasure to serve under your chairmanship. Can I congratulate my, both my honourable friends, uh, both for securing the debate and for speaking, notwithstanding what is clearly a pretty bad sore throat. But can I start with one key point? He, my old friend um, at, the out, at the end of his speech for Gravesham said, this is a small matter inside the vast portfolio of the Department of Transport. First of all, this is not a small matter to the people of Swanscombe and the surrounding area. It is a massive issue. I accept that, I acknowledge that, I appreciate it. All of us comprehend the scale of the problem. And it is a bad day when government, in all its glory or not glory, starts thinking, oh, this is too small for us to get involved. So I promise him and all colleagues and anybody who is watching or reading this debate, we take this very seriously. We are here to help and we believe that there are things that we can do to facilitate a resolution of this. So I, I, I think that the, the acceptance of the issue being significant is utterly vital. And the fact that government uh, puts that on the record, I want to put credit to both my colleagues today and also credit to Councillor Harmon, who embodies the rich tradition of councillors who really get involved and take and go above and beyond to try and resolve local issues and full credit to him. I accept and acknowledge that Kent County Council have a very, very difficult job. And I, I want to try and uh, assess and analyse in the time I have both the extent of the difficulty and explain some of the causation of the ongoing problems, but also trying to, try to show some sort of light uh, in the tunnel that we were all facing. So, in the first instance, what can the Department for Transport do? I think the first key point is, it, it has to be accepted that uh, this is a very significant um, road failure. And this is not the standard thing that local authorities are dealing with. And that is evidenced bluntly by the degree and the number of surveys that are required, by the um, extent that is necessary to complete those surveys before you can identify, first and foremost, what is the cause of the problem. Then, sadly, there will have to be an attribution of blame. And thirdly, then, how it is the problem to be fixed, because whilst it is entirely the desire of everybody in this room and everybody watching or reading to fix the problem, <coughs> solidifying a road on the base that we are dealing with is quite clearly very technical, very difficult, and the, there is no simple solution to this, and to pretend otherwise is naive. However, what I am very keen to do, and is already happening, is to ensure that the technical experts at the Department for Transport, who build major roads and major highways and motorways, are available to Kent County Council and are working absolutely hand uh, in hand with them. Secondly, the core funding for Kent, without getting into too much of the nuts and bolts, has gone up considerably, and they have had £181 million worth of funding for highway maintenance since 2019. They clearly have been a beneficiary of the Network North funding following the uh, decision of the PM in October of last year on the second leg of HS2, and they will receive £135 million in total between 2023 and 2020, 2034, and that is funding in addition to the local transport funding from the last spending review. But I acknowledge and accept that this is going to be a very expensive process, and 
The tricky bit here is until we are identify what is the causation, and that requires the surveys that Kent are trying to do, and I, we will struggle. And I echo and endorse the comments of my noble friend for Dartford that uh, it is utterly vital that Kent progress this matter in the sense that if they are required to take legal action, then so be it, then legal action should be taken and that should be expedited. I'd also put in a plea to the owner of the third property uh, to consider the situation here because it is patently clear that whilst two of the properties have given their consent, the fact that the third property has not given their consent, it can be challenged and overcome through a legal process which will cost the taxpayer money and which will take time. But I would urge <coughs> the third owner to consider again and to be aware of the um, responsibilities that all of us need to, to discharge and ask them to avoid the legal process uh, that and sadly will uh, be necessary and will unquestionably, I suspect, and I cannot commit courts to this process in the future, but having been a lawyer for 20 years, I'm confident that Kent will be successful in this process, albeit it will take time. What follows thereafter is, once one has identified the cause of the, of the problem, and my honourable friend set out the fact that there is clearly a huge amount of leaks and water um, egress uh, on and around the demise of this road. The question, of course, maintains, is that something that was caused by the collapse of the road or is that something that caused the collapse of the road? Uh, none of us here are structural engineers or water engineers able to assess that. I'm actually more interested in the long-term solution, which is how does one then reconstruct a road in what is clearly quite friable land. That is not simple. And again, the DFT are on hand to assist in whatever way they possibly can. The, uh, the basic principle, which we can't get around, is that under law passed by this um, uh, House of Commons, the 1980 Highways Act, Section 41, all local authorities are liable for the maintenance and upkeep and repair of their local roads. That continues to this day, and it is not the norm in any way, shape or form uh, for the Department for Transport to step in and say, do not worry about the statutory obligations that are set out under the Highways Act and have been acknowledged under repeated governments. Uh, we will step in and fix this particular problem. And that's not what I would respectfully propose, because it is unquestionably that Kent are the organisation on the ground who are best able to drive forward uh, an ascertainment of what the problem is and then a solution to said problem. However, what I do think is not acceptable is that not all the parties in the room are talking on an ongoing basis. So, and I, and I don't want to get into a he said, she said situation with Thames Water or their respective legal teams or the lawyers that rep represent everybody. What I want to do is talk about the art of the possible. And the art of the possible surely is this. I, as a minister, can declare at the dispatch box that my door is open to convene a meeting with Thames Water, with Kent County Council, and uh, to follow up, I'm going to write a letter tomorrow to Thames Water, to their chief executive, inviting him uh, in the next uh, few weeks to come in, if necessary, with legal teams to discuss the way ahead. Now, it is complicated because, self-evidently, everybody would like the road fixed like that. It is impossible to do anything until you can identify causation and what a structural engineer with them says what good repair looks like. However, there is a clear middle ground which, if one was able to enter a legal agreement, and I say this as an if, with the respective parties, Kent County Council and Thames Water, that all parties would put aside any uh, issue of blame for the present, allow any mediation to go ahead on a uh, blame basis uh, on a, in, on a, either in a court of law or in a standard tribunal which is done on these sort of things on a regular basis on the collapse of roads. There's a standard tribunal that can be entered into, either in a court or in mediation. Allow that process to go ahead. Government will step in and assist whatever way they possibly can to try and resolve this at the fastest possible speed. That, it seems to me, is the best way ahead. Um, it is not the case that government can fund this um, unilaterally. There is no specific pot that exists where the Department for Transport dips into and, and bails out individual local authorities in these circumstances. But what I can definitely see 
uh, the potential for is, provided we have a legal agreement that Party A or Party B will, will meet the end costs at the end of the day, so the taxpayer is not out of pocket, um, particularly if the key point is if um, Thames Water is liable for this, then we're in a position uh, that the, the government can step in and assist. Now, clearly, there's a lot of ifs and buts in that, but I want to assure my honourable friends that we are going to try our hardest to resolve that in that particular way. Uh, that would be going above and beyond anything that has ever been done before, frankly, and I think there is nothing more that one could do over and above that. Uh, and it would be right as well. I think I've got to be very conscious both that the Department of Transport, A, do I have the funds uh, within my portfolio to pay for what could be a very significant project, because any project that the department proceeds with is project money that is not proceeded on something else. And secondly, I'm, I'm being liable for taxpayers' money. There is clearly, I've got to be ensuring that that taxpayers' money is being sent in a, spent in an appropriate way when the normal course of events is a local authority and a uh, transgressor, whether that is a water company or any other um, uh, uh, landlord or whatever, uh, have to thrash that out between the two of them. That's what I propose to try and do. It is unquestionably the case that the local authority will assist on an ongoing basis. Uh, I will certainly be uh, writing to Thames Water to back up my own friend of Dartford's uh, email and to make very, very sure that publicly we have stated our door is open to try and resolve this. Clearly, Thames Water have their own issues that we are all acutely aware of. But at the same stage, they are a water company serving all of our constituents. Uh, they have obligations just as much as anybody else. Uh, and if it is a matter of law, then the law can be paused whilst we resolve this uh, between ourselves. That is what I propose. That is what I hope that we're going to be able to do. Um, in the intervening period, as my honourable friend for Dartford set out, we clearly, uh, my predecessor visited the site. He knows I was in his constituency today. I didn't go to Galley Hill, to be fair but I was in his constituency today, I'm acutely aware of the wider impact that um, this has on not only his local businesses, but also the day-to-day -day lives of his constituents and my honourable friend's constituents. We will do what we can going forward. That is my solemn pledge to this House. I genuinely hope... Of course, I'll give away. I'm very grateful for this. Of course, the Minister responsible for national highways. Uh, this road, A226, if it were any bigger... Uh, would be a road that would come under the responsibility of national highways. Um, therefore, does the Minister have any objections when we come to construction or rebuilding for Kent County Council Highways Department contacting national highways in order to seek some of their expertise? No, I, I think I'd go further than that. I'd say that was what I would expect to happen on an ongoing basis. It is in the interest of national highways that one of the key roads leading into Dartford Crossing, A2, is functioning properly. You know, there is no doubt whatsoever the breakdown of the, this particular road and the consequences of that impact upon lots of other things in the surrounding area. The bit I wanted to try and make clear, and I, if I haven't made it clear enough, I'll do it again. So when I say that the DFT uh, officials will give full cooperation, as far as I'm concerned, that includes national highways. It is in the interests of national highways that this road is up and running as soon as it is possible. It is in the wider national interest. It's not just in the interest of the good people of Swanscombe and the surrounding areas. Uh, we're very keen that this happens. There are clearly consequences if it isn't resolved, and we want that to happen. The question is that this House has considered government support for repairs to the A226 Galley Hill Road. As many as are of that opinion say aye. aye. Of the contrary, no. I think the eyes have it, the eyes have it. Order, order. This sitting is suspended until 6.30 p.m.